This screencast is a follow-on to the previous screencast on the time, finding the time complexity of iterative algorithms. In this screencast, I'm going to focus on recursive algorithms. And just like in the last screencast, most of the time, in fact, in this screencast, all the time is going to be spent on, spent on steps four and five. Uh, so now we're going to have a recursive algorithm, and we're going to try to find a formula for the number of times that some basic operation is executed. And in this here today, we're going to be focusing on recurrence relations. So we'll have an algorithm. We'll come up with a recurrence relation that describes the number of times that the basic operation is executed in that algorithm. And then we'll take that recurrence relation and solve it. And we'll do, I'll illustrate doing this a couple of ways. One is called backward substitution, and the other one is the recursion tree method. Uh, later on in the course, I'll talk about the master theorem. So to illustrate this, I'm going to work on a simple example called the Tower of, Hano Tower of Hanoi puzzle. Um, we're going to have three towers, or spindles, and on one of the spindles, we're going to have a set of disks. And notice um, that those dis the disks on this initial spindle, the source spindle, um, are in decreasing size as you go up. So in all during the puzzle, you're always gonna you're only gonna be able to put smaller things on top of larger things. The goal of the puzzle is to move this tower onto one of the other spindles, say this spindle over here. Call it my call that the target spindle. And so we're gonna move all those we want to move all those disks over there, but there's two constraints. You can only move one disk at a time, and it must be placed on one of the spindles. So you can't put it off to the side. And a larger disk can never be placed above a smaller disk. And the goal here is to try to move the disks to one of the empty um, spindles, it says disk spindles, in as few moves as possible. So you might pause the screencast now, think about how you might solve this puzzle recursively, and then go on to the next slide. So here's our picture again. We've got the disks on the source spindle, We've got this other spindle over here, and then we're going to try to move them to this target spindle. So the idea that makes this all work fairly straightforward in a straightforward way is pretend that you've got a genie or a magic black box that can solve the problem for smaller problems. So we'll use the genie or the black box to move n minus 1 of the n disks into this middle spindle. That'll be the first thing. Then we'll move the largest disk over to our target spindle. And then we'll call our magic black box or our genie, and they will move the n minus 1 disks over to the final target. So once you get the idea, I mean, I think it's fairly easy, and it shows the power of recursion, you don't need to worry about what happens to all the intermediate moves of the disks. They're going to magically be taken care of by the recursive program. And this idea translates fairly easily into pseudocode. Right? So if we have our program here, Hanoi, it's going to have, have n disks on the source. It's going to try to move them to target, and it's going to use this the middle spindle I'm going to call aux. Um, and it's going to use that spindle to get them to target. They're going to be n disks. Now, I've named these uh, because these are the ultimate these will be the names of the spindles. This is where they are initially. This is where I want them to end up. And this is where what I'll use to get them there. Now, if there's more than or equal to one disk, then what we'll do is we'll call Hanoi on n minus 1 disks. Now, we're going to move the n minus 1 disks from source to auxiliary. Okay, so remember in the other picture, we had the middle spindle was the auxiliary spindle, and so now we're moving the n minus disks, one disks to the middle spindle, and we'll use the target as sort of our extra spindle to help us do that. Then, the second move, if you remember in the previous picture, was move the nth disks, n, the nth disk from source to target, and then finally, once you've done that, now you can move the n minus one disks. That up here, you move to aux. So now you, they're on aux. You move them to target, 
and you use the source as sort of is the extra spindle. Notice, um, unlike lots of recursive programs, I don't actually even have a base case. What it's, there's not an obvious base case here, but the base case is actually n equals zero, okay? Because if you pass in zero, then basically it does nothing. There are no moves. Okay, when n is equal to one, notice what happens. Then you call it on with the first parameter equal to zero, so nothing happens. You move the first disk from source to target, and then nothing happens again. So the base case is just hidden in this one set of um, instructions. Now, stop and think for a minute. What is this going to mean in terms of a recurrence relation? If this whole thing is going to take, say, hn moves, then what's going to happen? What is this going to take? This will take h of n minus 1 moves. This will be 1 move, and this will be h of n minus 1 moves. So we'll get a recurrence relation. Let's see how that works. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, we're going to use m instead of h. Um, so will mn be the number of moves required for n disks? So that corresponds to this call. That's what we're trying to find out. How many moves are required for this call? And what's that going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be equal to the number of moves this call requires plus this one move plus the number of moves this call requires. Well, those two, the first, the line three and line five, those are both m, by definition, that's m of n minus one moves. So we get the following recurrence relation. m of n is equal to m of n minus one plus one plus m of n minus one. Okay, this is line three, line four, line five. And you just rewrite that and you get two m of n minus one plus one. So now, how do we solve this recurrence relation? Here we've got this recurrence relation. We've got a base case. If there's one disk, it's going to require one move. So how do we do it? Well, there's this te technique called back substitution. And it's very mechanical, but you just you have to be careful not to make any mistakes. Um, so you have to be very careful in terms of the writing down the equations. So you start off with the basic recurrence relation. Now what we're going to do is take the recurrence relation for this, mn minus 1, and plug it in for it. And that'll be from here to here. Okay, so notice that um, m of n minus 1 is going to be equal to 2 times m of n minus 2. Right in the recurrence relation, you always, in this recurrence relation, you're always subtracting 1. So the initial argument was n minus 1, so now we subtract 1 from that, and we get n minus 2 plus 1. Okay? Now notice, that's exactly, this is exactly what got plugged in here. So we have 2 times m of n minus 1. That's 2, could be rewritten as 2 times this whole quantity. Okay? So that's 2 m n minus 2 plus 1. And then you still have the plus 1 from here. So if you multiply that out, you get 2 squared times m of n minus 2 plus 2 plus 1. If you do it one more time, now write m of n minus 2 in terms of m of n minus 3 and multiply it all out, and you'll get 2 cubed times m of n minus 3 times 2 squared plus 2 squared, sorry, plus 2 plus 1. So if you keep doing this k times, you can see the pattern here. This will be 2 to the k times m times m of n minus k plus 2 to the k minus um, 1. This should be minus 1, sorry, uh, all the way down to plus 1. So how do we get, what do we need to do? We need to get this down to the base case. We need to get it down to something we know. Well, that's m of 1. So that means k has to be n minus 1. Okay. So n minus k has to be equal to 1, so k must be n minus 1. Just rearrange the terms, put the k over here, subtract the 1 over there. And so what do we end up with then? Um, so once we go down to get uh, n minus k equals 1 and k is n minus 1, what we get is we get 2 to the n minus 1 times m1 plus 2 to the n minus 2 plus 2 plus 1, 
So that gives us 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 to the n minus 2 all the way down to 1. That's a geometric sequence. If you look on the internet or um, in any algorithms textbook, you'll see that that sums up to the following thing. 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 minus 1. Well, 2 minus 1 is just 1, so we can ignore that. And so we get a finally a closed form solution, 2 to the n minus 1. So towers of Inouye to solve for n disks requires 2 to the n minus 1 moves. That's the bottom line. Notice that's exponential. Um, and so it's going to grow very, very, very quickly. Oh, oops. A completely equivalent, um, some more, somewhat more informative way to compute um, the closed form solution for the number of moves is to think about the call tree. So here's the call tree for Hanoi. Uh, there's the initial call with n is the first parameter. It makes two calls on line three and line five, uh, with the parameter being n minus. So now uh, we're going to take a second method that's totally equivalent to the method of back substitution. This is usually recalled, referred to as the recursion tree method. And what you do is you, you draw the call tree of the algorithm that you're trying to analyze. So here we're trying to analyze the Hanoi algorithm. And the first call that starts everything off has n as the parameter of the number of disks. That generates two calls uh, with n minus 1 as the number of disks that need to be moved. That will generate two calls, n minus 2, etc. So you get this complete binary tree of with n levels. And you can see what happens. It, again, each call generates one move, if you remember on line 4. So there's one move at that level, two moves at this level. So one move, two moves, four moves at the four moves at this level, etc. Down to here, and this will be two to the n minus one moves. Because this is two to the zero, this is two to the one. Etc. So summing these up gives you exactly 2 to the n minus 1 at the bottom plus 2 to the n minus 2 all the way down to 1, um, which is exactly the same summation we got using back substitution and will give you as the same final result, of course, which is 2 to the n minus 1. Notice um, in some ways, you can think of uh, the recursion tree method as sort of the long, long way, making sure you understand exactly what's going on, whereas the back substitution method is sort of a shortcut. So I recommend, um, at least for the first few times you do this, you draw the recursion tree and give you a better sense for uh, what, the, what the answer should be.